So thanks, Dwayne, for asking me to do this uh, What is Toyota Carter? So as I did for the TWI, uh, what is TWI? I want to spend a little bit of time on the why uh, is Toyota Carter important as much as the, um, as the what it is. So there's two or three whys that I'm going to go through. The first is that Toyota Carter is a way of developing scientific thinking. So scientific thinking, and I'll just read from my notes that you can see on the uh, TV, is a mental framework for approaching goals and obstacles or problems. It's a continuous comparison between what we predict will happen next, seeing what actually happens, and adjusting our understanding and actions based on what, uh, what we learn from any difference. And I guess that begs the question of why is scientific thinking important? It doesn't end just with scientific thinking. How is that going to add value in our organisation? So scientific thinking reduces the incidence of breathing our own exhaust. I heard Mike Rother say that about a year ago. Um, I think it was in Savannah or before perhaps. One or more, uh, and it's a favourite thing for me because a couple of reasons. One is I know I do it and I've been in plenty of meetings and discussions where I've uh, heard people breathing their own exhaust. So, and essentially what we're saying there is that's making ourselves feel good by knowing what will happen beyond what we've experienced. In other words, we're, we've got preconceived ideas. And it's also preaching to our own biases. When we breathe our own exhaust, what we're, sorry, what we're offering here uh, with scientific thinking is an alternative to breathing our own exhaust, where we're going to consider where we're going in terms of a condition, we're going to look at our uh, understand our obstacles, we're going to design an experiment, do the experiment, uh, find out what actually happened and see what we learn from that. So rather than, scientific, rather than breathing our own exhaust, we're going to scientifically uh, think scientifically. That will improve, uh, mean we improve more effectively and efficiently. So I think this is one of the valuable points with Toyota Carter that sometimes gets overlooked is we're not asking for extra time, we're asking managers and leaders to move their time from one thing to something else. So from breathing our own exhaust, which I'm as guilty of as anyone else, to actually um, scientific thinking, which will result in um, more effective and efficient improvement. The third why for Toyota Carter is it's so we can develop these two patterns that you can see here, the two patterns that Mike identified within Toyota. The systematic scientific way of thinking and acting and managers as teachers of that way. That's why Toyota Carter is important. And, and the reason that's important is that could be because that's a foundational structure for continuous improvement. And, and I believe that the word, or that phrase continuous improvement has sort of morphed into something different to what was first intended. We tend to use continuous improvement as a label for departments, uh, lean departments or in continuous improvement departments, or to describe a set of activities. But actually, if you consider it, is that the word continuous is actually an adjective which describes the way we're going to improve or how often we're going to improve. We're going to do it all the time. So those, those, that less visible stuff that Mike identified, the systematic scientific way of thinking and acting, and managers of teachers of that, uh, of that way is actually foundational for real continuous improvement. In other words, improvement that's happening all the time. So let's move now into the what. Uh, now I'm going to start with a negative, which I don't normally do, and I want to just go over what Toyota Carter is not. Toyota Carter is not two things that Mike Rother or, and the people who did the research saw and heard happening at Toyota, car, at Toyota. They didn't see the improvement carter, they didn't hear it, they didn't see the coaching carter, they didn't hear the coaching carter. I think it's very important to recognise that. And I was talking to Mike uh, yesterday about this at lunchtime and he reminded me of this and it's, often, it's funny how you often read things and sort of move on and forget them, but he reminded me of the, the, the uh, what brought Toyota Carter about, which was two research questions. The first research question was, what are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that lie behind Toyota's success with continuous improvement and adaptation? As a consequence of that question, then they discovered the routines that were on the previous page and managers as teachers of that way. They didn't discover the improvement carter and the coaching carter. That came second, and I'll get into that in a little bit more detail. So what is Toyota Carter? Bruce Lee said, uh, made a statement that if you, want to learn to uh, if you want to learn to swim, jump into the water. On dry land, no frame of mind is ever going to help you. And then we've got a bit of a gap because between that thought and 
the, the, the less visible stuff, uh, we need something to help us. In other words, if we're going to learn this less visible stuff, we are going to jump into the water, but we're not going to jump in without a life buoy or something to hold on to. So what we're going to hold on to is two kata, and a kata is a pattern you can practice to develop a skill. So a kata is a pattern you practice to develop a skill. The, in this case, in this uh, situation here, that the two kata represent that thing we're going to hold on to when we jump into the water. Because the only way we're going to learn is to jump into the water. No matter what we believe or what we think, if we stay on dry land, we're not going to develop these uh, skills here. So a kata is a pattern you practice to learn a skill, and uh, that essentially underpins what the two Toyota kata are about. So there are two, two kata or two patterns. One is the improvement kata, and one is the coaching kata. So the improvement kata is the pattern we practice to, to help us develop the top of that less visible stuff, which is a systematic sci and scientific way of thinking and acting. The coaching kata is the second kata, a second pat pattern we practice to help us as managers become teachers of that way. So the first kata is linked to the first less visible stuff. The second kata is linked to the second less visible stuff, if you like. The important point to make here, that these two kata are very visible. When you start practicing, you are going to see a storyboard in five sections. You are going to have, see a, co a pocket card with five questions on it. That is the visible stuff um, that we'll see at the start. But the whole point is that through regular practice, through routine and practice, daily practice, then that visible stuff will transcend into the less visible stuff over time. That's the whole point of a carter, and in particular, these two Toyota carter patterns. So let's elaborate on those a little bit further, the two patterns. The first is the improvement carter. Uh, the improvement carter helps generate this systematic scientific way of thinking and acting. There's four, uh, sorry, four steps of the improvement carter. The first, as you can see up the top, is to get the direction or challenge. In other words, set our goal, uh, our true north. Where are we heading uh, in this whole scenario that we're, that, that we're embarking on? The second step of the improvement carter is to grasp our current condition. That's about getting facts and data, not just data alone. Getting, grasping the current condition, if you've truly grasped it, you won't just have numbers, in other words, data. You will have facts that uh, gave rise to the data. The third step of the improvement carter is to establish your next target condition by a by when date. So that's a condition we're going to strive for. That will give us an outcome. That outcome, which is often a number, the outcome of achieving the condition, which is often a number, will be a step towards the goal or our, uh, our challenge. And then the fourth step of the improvement carter is to conduct experiments, or de sorry, determine the obstacles that are stopping us achieving that target condition and conduct experiments around those obstacles. Now, just as a bit of a side note, talking to a number of colleagues over the last uh, six to eight weeks, what we've determined is that there's a big assumption in the improvement carter, and I again spoke to Mike about this yesterday, is that there's an assumption that people are able to and know and are capable of conducting experiments in the workplace. We're finding that assumption's been misplaced. So at the moment now we're working on developing a, a learn by doing program, which will actually just focus on designing and doing experiments in the workplace. So keep your ear to the ground for that one. There'll be more information coming on that in the next four to six weeks. So that's the first of the two carters, the improvement carter through practice, then this less visible stuff, systematic scientific way of acting and thinking will, will, will develop. Now I'm going to revert back again as to why Mike did this and this is another of the sayings that I really, really like of Mike's and I wish I'd known this one, I wish I'd recognised this one uh, when I was in management positions over you know, the last 25 to 5 years ago. And what Mike says is, hoping to create new behaviours by explaining or trying to convince people doesn't really work. The explanation may be correct, but it doesn't change us. And now I reflect on that quite a bit, and I can see instances when I was in a leadership role and I was convinced of a certain way to go and I prepared what I considered to be excellent explanations and wondered why no one followed them and now I understand. I, as I said, I wish I'd known this a little bit earlier in my um, career. I think I would have changed uh, the way I operate in some way, in many ways. So with, with the point Mike's making here is that had he just left it 
through that research question, remember they identified those two routines at Toyota, the systematic scientific way of thinking and acting and managers as teachers of that way. Had Mike just told us that in his book or in a PowerPoint presentation or something, nothing would have changed. I think that's the point here. Why, Mike, why did Mike develop or, or come up with the improvement carter and the coaching carter? Because telling alone doesn't work. Just describing those patterns to us wouldn't have changed anyone's behaviour. So that's why my, uh, an underpinning reason why the carters were developed, to help us um, develop these patterns here. So the second one, the first one I spoke about was the improvement carter. The second one is the coaching carter. Five questions. What's the target condition? What's the actual condition now? Then there's a reflection for subsequent, uh, from subse for subsequent experiments. Then what obstacles are stopping us from reaching our target condition and which one will we work on now? And what's your next step? And then lastly, how quickly can we see what we have learned? So that's the five coaching questions that if they're done often enough, you'll see in both the slides I've put up that keyword practice. If they're practiced enough, then the outcome of the coaching carter will be managers as teachers of scientific thinking and acting. So that's really draws us to a close. If you want to learn more about uh, Toyota Carter, please go to our continuum, uh, which underpins the TWI Institute Continuum for Development of Capability. Go to our website, uh, www.vwos.com. First click, you'll get this front page. Second click, bottom left corner, where it says learn more and a continuum will come up. Click on each pillar and behind there will be downloadable PDFs free for you to do as you see fit. Um, and also you can email me if you have any questions on uh, oroach at twinstitute.org. So thank you very much for listening.